Hi everybody, my name is Ken Paddock, I'm Life Support Medical San Diego, and today I wanted to discuss a great opportunity to get to know uh, a senior. Uh, most seniors have walkers and you've seen them uh, walking around with them, and this is a, this is a way for you to approach a senior and offer something that is sort of a good faith gesture as well as give them some technical assistance with their walker. And what we're talking about is walker maintenance tune-up. And so what we're going to go through today is what goes wrong with a walker. We have the brakes, we have the handles, we have the hand grips, we also have the height, and we're going to also show you how to adjust cables as well, keep them from grabbing onto things. And when you approach a senior, this is a great thing to just walk up and just say, hey, how are your brakes doing? Have you uh, had anybody check them lately? And that's such an open statement for them. They feel very inviting. And so they allow you to sort of take the walker and, and take control of the situation. So it's very simple to check the brakes. So we've got hand brakes that are used during the walking motion. So as you're walking and you need to assist yourself and slow yourself down, you have the hand brakes. So what will happen a lot of times and I find this is probably 9 out of 10 times, you'll have one wheel that is not adjusted properly. So what will happen is, is that as you slow down, the walker will turn one direction. So by checking the brakes in front of them, you can show them how the wheels do not stop instantly when the brakes are applied and show them how hazardous it is. The second is emergency brakes. When the handles are pushed downward, the walker should lock in place. And again, what's happening is that one wheel will be out of adjustment and it'll actually spin to a certain direction, right or left, and or they won't even be able to stop the walker at all and it'll just slide forward. Showing them is very important so they can understand that one, you're doing them a huge favor, uh, two, is that you care, and three, you're gonna make the adjustments that they can actually see and use that will make it a lot safer. Now, uh, everybody is, uh, Using a walker has probably developed a bad habit of using it, so we're going to get into later about how to actually use the walker the proper way. But let's get into the maintenance part of it. Okay, let's talk about the tools needed to uh, make walker adjustments. Uh, I bring a little chair with me when I do this uh, type of work, so what it does is it allows me to get down lower to the actual components of the walker. But here's what we really need to be successful walker mechanics. Black tape. <laughs> Some zip ties. Um, I typically use 8 inch zip ties. Black is the most common color, but you could use clear as well. Um, I use a uh, standard Phillips screwdriver. This one has a reversible head, so it'll go flathead and Phillips. I use a pair of uh, wire snips. These are kind of little scissors. Now I bought small hand tools because we're working in small areas, so this works really well for cutting the zip ties or even removing tape or yarn that some of the uh, seniors have used to tie up their equipment. Uh, razor knife, if you have one, scissors will work as well. A uh, small pair of pliers. Uh, if you want to have any sort of, uh, you know, maybe an open channel grip, a channel lock, vice grips, anything that can allow you to sort of torque a small nut is what you need. This seems to work fine because everything really is just only hand tight. And then last is I use a pair of needle nose pliers. So this little toolkit you can get at Home Depot. They sell, um, this is a Husky brand, so they sell them a three pack and you can assemble everything together. Out the door, maybe about $25 total with all the equipment. But it's everything that you need to have to do walker maintenance. Um, it's easy to carry around, you can put it in a little bag and away you go. Okay, so let's start with the first thing, which is the handbrakes. This is the most important thing. Um, statistics will show about 25% of all falls are caused by a four-wheel walker. And some of the main reasons why is because people are trusting that the brakes are actually working and slowing them down or the ability to stop them. And when they don't, then this walker, which is about 10 to 20 pounds, becomes counterweight and could either tip over, throw them over. As they for fall forward, they can get the wheels caught. So it's very dangerous. So they need to be able to have control of this. So adjusting the brakes is fairly simple. So we'll get a little chair down here. Get yourself in a comfortable position. And what we do here 
is that we're going to show you there's an adjustment screw on the base of this uh, walker and these screws can typically be adjusted by your hand so nothing's really tight down here but what we're going to do is make some adjustments with the screws and we're going to loosen the bottom screws typically they have a bottom screw which actually locks in the cable system and we're going to undo that bottom screw then we're going to come up on top and the, the cabling system as you pull this upward you're pulling the braking system up slightly so that's where the adjustments being made as you pull the cable up you'll see there's a set screw and the set screw then you will be able to lower and lock in the brakes so when the brakes start to fail it's a couple of things it's either the tires are getting smaller so the braking device is getting farther away from the, the actual tire because it's decreasing in size or the cable is becoming loose and not giving the tension that it needs so as they apply the brakes it's not engaging so all we're doing is we're pulling the cable upward adjusting the set screw checking the brakes to make sure that they've been adjusted properly and then setting the lock screw at the bottom so when you make adjustments on your brakes you will make your adjustments and you will check them as you go and what you're looking for as you apply them is if you apply the hand brakes evenly the tires stop at the same time sometimes you can adjust one stronger than the other so when we look at the bottom set screws you'll see the distance of the adjustment you can actually see the height of the screw and that will tell you the adjustment you've made so you want even amounts of exposed screw on each side to make sure that the brakes are being applied evenly so as you apply them you'll see the brakes apply evenly and stop now most people's brakes have been really bad so out of adjustment and or not working at all so any adjustment it feels much better so it may take three or four times to actually get the proper adjustment but you'll feel it come to a complete stop when you squeeze it with your hand that is your motion brakes this is the part where people are walking and need to apply to slow down Okay, the next adjustment on the braking system is the emergency brake. So what this is designed to do is, is the handles locked down in place. I always uh, try to tell seniors as they're setting them is to put the palms of their hand in here so they can use their weight of their body and just lower their knees. And by doing this kind of gives them that equal balance and good body posture to set the emergency brakes. But what happens is the brakes, once applied, the, the walker should not move. Now here's where you're going to see a couple of things happening. One, you're going to see one wheel not adjusted properly and the other one tight and it'll cause the walker to spin which is very dangerous because this could throw somebody off balance and throw them forward. The other one which is a very common misadjustment is the brakes will work by hand but once you apply to emergency brake it'll move. So that's very common. So the handle system is not broken, so don't panic. What you'll need to do is go down there and make some adjustments on the, the, uh, the braking system like we did on the normal brake adjustment, and it will actually fix this problem, and it will actually correct it. Emergency brakes will be able to lock into place. So you want to check both. Make sure your running brakes and your emergency brakes are checked properly. Make sure your hand brakes are applied evenly so it slows down evenly, and make sure when you lock them in, this is the emergency brake. Make sure they're tight. Okay, another common uh, hazard that a walker has are these cables. So this is the braking cable that, that we just made some adjustments to. So what happens when you apply it, this, this little cable inside this plastic housing pulls and of course activates the braking device. Most of the time, these cables are long, sweeping loops. Uh, which helps keep the kinking down, which makes the brakes operate properly. But these sweeping loops end up getting really loose and people catch things on it like end tables and other people's chairs. So what we have here is we take zip ties. Again, these are uh, eight inch uh, black zip ties. Just got them from Home Depot. And what we do is very easily, um, and again, what we're looking for is just zip tying this up to where it's not flopping around it's not super tight but it would keep the cable within about a half of an inch either way from flying outside the vehicle and then cutting it real simple this will uh, help them keep the wires in 
make them feel more secure. And this feature right here, they really believe that we are a mechanic after we do this service because it's something above and beyond the, uh, the normal adjustments made on a walker. So this is a great one to do. So another common uh, adjustment is the handles. So what will happen over time from using the brakes is that they'll start to get the handles loose. There's a small set screw on top that uh, is responsible for adjusting this. And you've also got um, the adjustment being made here too. This handle will get really loose at the actual height adjustment. So we want to make two adjustments for the handles by setting the screw and what we're going to do is, is this little device will just spin until it gets tightened. And as it gets tightened up, it will adjust the handle properly. And this will keep it from moving from side to side and giving them that loose feeling. The second one is adjusting this handle here and setting the screw on top, which is very simple. We'll just tighten the handle back up, making it secure for them. This is a great way, way to secure the handbrakes as they're using them. Okay, so let's get into a little bit about the actual adjustment being made for the proper height of a person. So what we have here is the ability to take the handles and this screw here, which is the handle screw we just made an adjustment to, can be undone. And as we loosen this up, we can adjust the height of the handle. And you can see as you move this up, there's different set holes that will allow you to raise the height in small increments based on the user. And so what we're looking for is the proper height. And again, you gotta set the screws, set the holes right into the, uh, the pin, making sure that it's adjusted properly. And when you adjust the height of a walker for an individual, you're gonna wanna line the handle grips right here to the wrist. So when somebody's standing there, their wrist should be at the height of the handle grip. That is the proper adjustment. If it's at their fingers, the walker's too low. If it's passed inside their forearms, the walker is too high. So this allows you to make sure, and you'll see when somebody's walking incorrectly, they're either gonna have their shoulders too high, which means that the walker is obviously too high, or the shoulders may be too low, or they're leaning over too far, which means that the walker is set too low. Just a little bit of a caution here. When you make an adjustment on the height, since they've been using it for a while, it's going to feel a little different, may feel awkward. So I always recommend using only one adjustment hole. And two weeks later, when you see them again, you can make another adjustment. So it's better to make them in small increments than to do one quick fix because now you've given them a whole new balance point and you give them the ability to walk differently, may feel different, may also create a sense that they might fall, which could create a fall. So it's real simple. You can adjust this. Now, if you're out of the adjustments, you've slid this all the way up and there's no way to raise it or lower it anymore, the bottom wheels typically have the same thing. They'll have adjustments down here, the same type of locking device. The bar will have holes on it, and you can either decrease it or increase the seat height and then work with the handles. So most people, when they get the walkers, uh, are typically not given uh, the proper adjustment when they get it handed off. The DME will show up, drop off the uh, walker uh, pre-assembled, and turn it over to them. And so there's no real adjustments made or any education on how to use it. Uh, so we're going to go into that later on, but again, making sure that the handles meet about the wrists. The last adjustment that we're going to make is the handle grip. So the grip typically has sort of a fin on it, which allows the, the user to put their palms on top of the grip, resting the thumb, which is the, the base of their thumb, on these little fin grips to give them uh, stability. Now what happens is that these will start to loosen up. So basically the, the grip becomes stretched out, and it's been pushed on and tugged, and it's causing them to spin or pop off. Very similar to those, those little bicycle, tricycle handle grips with the little tassels on them. They'll just eventually get loose. So what we want to do here, now these grips on this walker here is actually pretty tight. So this, this part of the walker here, um, 
This handle grip right here is actually pretty tight, so I'm not going to be able to show you what it looks like when you pull it off. But imagine this sliding off. Um, what you do is you take some electrical tape, you know, start with a you know 12 inch to 18 inch piece, and what you're going to do is is when the grip is off, you're going to put the tape and you're going to wrap it around the pipe. And what you're doing is is you're increasing the pipe width and also giving it a plastic surface so when the handle grip goes back on to it, it sticks to it and locks it in place. It's a very simple uh, adjustment. You may need more than 18 inches. Uh, you're typically not going to be able to do any more than 12 inches to 18 because you've got to wrap this around and that length of the electrical tape will get kind of tangled up. You want to try to avoid buckles so make it nice and smooth. But that adjustment will be very easy. You do it a couple of times and you'll see uh, how to fix this instantly. So let's talk about the proper technique on how to use a walker. So we, we discussed earlier how a DME will drop off a walker, uh, not make any adjustments, and certainly not teach the user how to use it properly. And we know that 25% of all falls are caused by a four-wheel walker, so there's a connection there. So what we know is that this aging population do not know how to use their walkers, and they're out of adjustments. So now we've made the adjustments, let's talk about the safe use of how to use a walker. So when you are using a walker, the braking system is the most important thing uh, to understand. We want to tell the operator to keep their fingers inside the brake system at all times. The handles have this sort of fin-like uh, device to keep the thumb rested comfortably and keeping your fingers inside the braking units at all time. As you're walking, these brakes are designed to slow you down and stop you from a potential fall and assist you in slowing your body weight down. Now, the next thing uh, you'll find that most people are using walkers use the emergency brakes to stop. So they'll be walking with their hands inside and they'll go like this. And that's their way of stopping. Well, that's too many motions when you actually need assistance right away. That's going to be a problem. So it's time to re-educate them and let them know that these handle grips and the handles for the brakes are designed to be used while walking. So being able to push and slow their body down. Now, the emergency brakes, uh, when you set the emergency brakes, you want to be able to set them properly. Some, some people don't have enough hand strength to push them down, so I just tell them to put their hands, their palms on the, on the brakes themselves, and if they can just lower their body weight a little bit, just their knees, just a little, just kind of gives them a little bit more weight to pop it into place. A lot of times their wrist can't do it properly, so what do they do? They don't use their emergency brakes. So this is a technique that will let them just kind of easily pop them into place, but still have stability. And remember, as the brakes are going on, if they lose their balance, the brakes will help them get back up and get back to a proper posture. Now, the other technique is that most people think that the walkers are used uh, to be leaning on. So these are not crutches, all right? Crutches are not, uh, not the same type of instrument as this. This is a device to help balance you when you're walking. This is assistance only, as well as being able to stop your momentum, whether it be going forward or backward in the event you lose your balance. So this is just to assist. So what you want to tell uh, the operators is that you're actually going to be walking like you're pushing a shopping cart. So if you're at a grocery store and you had your hands on the shopping cart, you'd be in a pushing motion. The same functionality applies, is that when you're walking, you're going to be walking, pushing it in front of your body, keeping your feet and your body aligned with about the back of the wheels. Any farther forward, you become a leaning hazard. Any closer, it starts to crowd you and you start banging your legs on it and creating uh, pain, discomfort, or distraction. So being able to bring your feet out to the wheels, being able to push properly, and walk normal. Again, pushing it rather than leaning into it. This is what causes falls is people, and you've seen them, you've seen the, 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 the older person, late 80s or above, walking around like this, and they're moving along, you know, they're walking, and they're not looking at all, and so this is a very dangerous motion. It could be that the walker is not adjusted properly. It could be that they think that leaning into it is the way that the walker operates, but those are all hazardous body positions and need to be corrected for safe use. So as you walk, pushing shopping cart, and moving the brakes, and applying them just like that. Very simple. So let's talk about one last thing about walker safety, and that is, is when you sit down in a chair, 
The walkers can be used for stability when standing. Now, most older people don't have the use of their legs, the strength, to stand up on their own. So they're probably going to use both their hands and they're going to lean forward as much as they can. And as they're leaning forward, that's really typically the point when their balance becomes uh, a hazard for them and they fall. And so the walker is important for it to be in position and ready to assist them. When you sit down, this all starts now when you sit, is that when you sit, you always set your brakes. And you can set them when you're sitting down. It's very simple. It's just one motion. Click, click. So once the walker is in place, it's locked in position. So when they stand up, they can actually use the walker as they try to navigate from the lower sitting position to an upright position. And with the brakes locked, they'll have success. If they don't have the brakes locked because they have a bad habit of it, you can see the mechanics of this gets a little, little awkward and that motion can throw them off balance causing them to fall backwards, fall forward, and again, a fall without any sort of use of the arms or hands to break the fall becomes very deadly. So teaching them also sitting down with the emergency brakes locked in place gives them a perfect ready to use walker when they stand up. So let me share with you one final thing about the walker is that over the past few months as I've been walking into these retirement homes and seeing the massive amounts of walkers and the traffic jams that happen with the walkers and the people using the walkers, uh, what I don't see is I don't see people helping those with walkers. So this actually becomes a real niche in our industry that there is a major need for. So it doesn't require many tools, doesn't require a lot of talent. Um, you do it a couple of times and you start to get an understanding of how the adjustments are made. You become more of an expert. But really what this is, is the, this is a huge value to offer somebody that really doesn't cost any money, but goes a long ways in good faith and goodwill. And during the process, while you're adjusting the walkers, teaching them how to use it, you're getting to know that person. And so a trust factor gets built and they will share with you medical history. They will share with you concerns that they've had. You even have the sort of safe space to talk and ask them questions about, have they fallen? What does that look like? Are they afraid that may happen again? And are you looking for solutions to solve that and give you a peace of mind? You know, independence starts here. So we wanna make sure that we teach them how to use it properly and they will never forget you.